Your Locked On Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Blue Jackets fans, happy Friday. It's the weekend. We made it. This is Locked On Blue Jackets. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms. Whether you are a first time listener or a regular listener, I appreciate you for coming and stopping by. So, today, we are finishing off our prospect week so far. We'll probably get more into prospect again next week. But uh, today we're talking to Jared Brown again of Draft Pro Hockey. And today we're talking about Simon Nemich, who is a uh, Slovakian defenseman that I am super, super excited to uh, to learn more about. So I'll just get right into it. Let's talk a little bit about a uh, different prospect now uh another guy that you mentioned was was really exciting was uh simon nemich who is a uh slackian defenseman so uh what can you what can you tell me about nemich and his game biggest thing for me with nemich is his puck moving ability and his offensive iq uh this is a extremely intelligent poised offensive defenseman um that has top pairing potential and uh, whenever he's starting to break out, he's always making a smart, conscious decision with the puck, whether that's moving it off of his stick um, with a precise pass up to one of his forwards or moving it with his feet. He's, uh, you know, I, I would consider him an elite puck rushing defenseman and he uses his speed to attack through open ice uh, really well. Um, and so, that is something that is really going to translate and benefit him at the NHL level and North American ice. Now, obviously he's playing in Slovakia now and the ice is a little bit bigger, but I still think the fact that he has that speed um, and the ability to separate himself from uh, a four checker that's chasing him maybe behind his net or just in his own that for that matter, I think that's really going to benefit him. And um, when you get into the offensive zone, this is a guy who can quarterback the power play, um, I see no issues in his ability to uh, distribute the puck and create chances because he's got elite vi- he's got elite vision. Um, he's got some uh, he's got some underrated hands, I would say honestly, um, and just really strong agility and lateral skating to move along the blue line and uh, shift into open ice or draw in defenders. So there's a lot of elements to his offensive game that makes him an intriguing prospect and why we have him as high as number five up uh, at uh, our latest winter rankings at Draft Pro. I mean, on the surface, he looks like such a prototypical Blue Jackets defenseman. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, my joke for the season has been that our defense core is Vladislav Gavrikov and then just five Rovers. (laughs) <laughs> um, but, uh, so it sounds like, it sounds like Nemec will, will fit right in, but, uh, yeah. does he have a, a NHL comparable kind of similar to, um, I know we talked about Corson Kuhlman's being like a, a Zach Gorensky type. How do you see Nemec in terms of like his, his NHL comparable? You know, I, I would say there's a bit of Morgan Riley in him. Um, you know, the way he can rush the puck out of the zone, uh, how active he is in joining the transition and the rush and how active he is uh, on the offensive blue line. So I, I would probably say uh, his uh, a comparable to him is a bit of a lesser Morgan Riley. Um, actually, I wouldn't even say lesser Morgan Riley because they are pretty similar um, as uh, one, one knack on Nemish's game is his defensive play. Um, you know, there, there's uh, some, uh, there's definitely some improvements that need to be there. And just like Morgan Riley um, coming up in the NHL and, and for many years until maybe, you know, I think he's, he's been getting a bit more credit the last two seasons um, um, for his, uh, for better defensive play. But Morgan Riley struggled to defend in his own zone um, for a decent amount of years with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And you kind of see some similarities with that in Nemish's game. But when you look at their play with the puck and their offensive IQ and skill, they're 
pretty similar. Do you think that this this lack of um, kind of defensive responsibility, should we say, is that a would you say that's a, a red flag, or is that something that you can you would kind of expect out of a, a young defenseman, something that can kind of fairly easily be uh, ironed over or improved on? I, I would not uh, mark it as a red flag. No, um, it is something that you know. He, it can be coached and improved on. I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, at times he's just uh, a bit weak in front of his own net and, and boxing up players or tying up their stick. I think it's just that is, you know, he's got to be stronger in front of his net. Um, sometimes it's um, bad pivot timing or um, just a slow reaction time to the play in his own zone. And that's just something where it comes from uh, better positioning, which can be taught. Um, and I I would say they're all very much, you know, you get a good defensive coach and you can correct them. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't mark them as a red flag. And I think this is, um, that, that is the good thing. Um, I think he's a, a really competitive player. He plays a ton of minutes. Um, you know, whenever he's playing for Slovakia, um, at an international stage, uh, he plays a ton of minutes. I'll be very interested to see I believe he's going to the Olympics and playing for Slovakia so I'll be interested to see um, how much ice time he gets there and how he defends uh, against um, you know maybe more experienced uh, uh, players but um, you know these are these are correctable um, mistakes in his games or lapse of judgments and um, you know it's something we see in a lot of young defensemen. Like I, I could say the same about an OHL defenseman, Ty Nelson. Like he has very, his defensive play is very similar to Nemec. There's sometimes lapses of judgment and poor timing to plays uh, that just leaves a man wide open. Coming up in a minute, I've got more of my conversation with Jared about Nemec. But first I want to tell you about Built Bar because it's the new year soon so that means new year's resolutions and if yours is about getting fit or eating better like mine probably should be make sure you include built bar in your plan because built bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or maybe even better than a candy bar built bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good you're gonna want to eat it unlike other protein bars which uh, can be chalky waxy or taste like a chemical spill you know, I, for me, I want to eat healthy, but like two weeks in, I want chocolate. And here's the great thing about Built Bar. It's covered in 100% real chocolate, low in calories, high, low in sugar, low in carbs, high in protein. And here's the best bit. If you go to Built.com, you promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Once again, that's Built.com. Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Yeah, I feel like we talked about this the, the last time we talked about, um, like, specifically CBJ prospect. of It's, like, you, you can teach bad defensive, or, like, you can train a player out of bad defensive habits, but if they have the, yeah. like, the hockey IQ and everything there already, like, it's, that's a lot harder to, to teach the, the hockey yeah. IQ than the, like, defensive um weaknesses so uh mm-hmm. yeah no and uh, I, I i i think that's i would like personally for me i va- i value a defenseman that's going to show me more offensive skill that's going to make him more impactful with the puck um for the nhl level that being their puck moving ability in transition uh their ability to break out the puck easily um, how they play in the offensive zone, playing off of their blue line to create chances. And if they have warts in their, uh, in their defensive game, that is something that can be worked on. And like, like you said, if they, have, if they show to have a high IQ, you would assume that they'd be able to um, be able to be coached to improve those um, defensive mistakes. And so... Um, yeah, I think, you know, if you, every defenseman's got a lot of, a, a bunch of learning 
and um, they're they're learning every day in the NHL, I find, because the game is getting so much tighter, but also so much faster. Um, so I think this is it, it's not a bad thing necessarily to see Nemish's uh, poor defensive play because it is uh, things you can see uh, that things that can be worked on. Right, and kind of long gone are the days of wanting a, a stay-at-home defenseman who basically like just eats mm-hmm. minutes and does function like you. Like I always think of um, Nicholas Sharmason, who yeah, basically yeah. spent his entire career making sure that nothing happened uh, anywhere on the ice. You know, and I think kind of yeah. long gone are, are those days. You want a, a defenseman. It's really mm-hmm. interesting to hear you say kind of a, an offensively minded defenseman in terms of like puck movement and transition. Because I feel like for a lot of times, and like I've been guilty of this as well, you think mm-hmm. offensive defenseman and you think oh scores a ton of goals, racks up a ton of primary yeah. assists, and it's not necessarily all about that. Um, but kind of um, to to go away from, from Nemec a little bit, I feel like there's a lot of really good Slovakian talent in this draft, and I feel like it's it's kind of been on the on the rise in terms yeah. of um, a, a hockey nation, shall we say? Do you, do you agree? Mm-hmm. Are you seeing a lot of like promising stuff coming out of Slovakia? Because I feel like we, we are getting further and further away from hockey kind of in a four country sport. You know, you see um, Slovakia is is on the rise. Obviously there's a lot of, of Czech players, things like that. But Slovakia is the one that kind of really, really intrigues me as, as, a, um, as a nation that has a lot of promising talent coming out of it. Yeah, I, I mean, I... Personally, I just think it's great for the sport um, to, uh, to see more nations uh, have these such talented young players come up. I mean, like it, it was huge for uh, Germany when we saw Leon Dreisaitl come up. And now Leon Dreisaitl is, you know, one of the best players in the NHL. And it's and he's not Canadian. He's not American, Russian or Swedish, which are, you know, maybe the top four nations. Um, but he's German. And, and now we're seeing you know, in this year's draft, a potential and, and most likely three Slovakian players go in the first round, potentially two in the top 10. And I, I just think that's great for the nation. I think they're doing a great job of developing um, their own players uh, home in Slovakia. I mean, there's there's three uh, Slovakian born players that are playing still at home in Slovakia. Um, whereas Slavkovsky uh, moved over to, and is playing in Finland, but Nemish, uh, Mesar, and uh, Sakara, who Adam Sakara is uh, um, around a third, a third rounder potential prospect. He's also another name to kind of look out for as just a kind of energizer bunny kind of player who has uh, got a motor that never gives up. Um, I know our scouts, uh, you know, we have a couple of scouts that really like him. And that's just another Slovakian to go, go to, uh, to add to the list. And I think they're doing a great job of developing their players at home. And they're, you know, they want to get back and, and, you know, I guess let hockey fans know that they are a hockey country and not to mention, uh, or not, uh, not to uh, take away, but uh, we also have an Austrian that potentially could go in the first round and Marco Casper and that's Austrian. I think I, I, I actually don't know if they've had, or I guess Michael Grabner, I think Michael Grabner is Austrian, but he would be the only one that I think went in the first round that I can recall. In a minute, I've got the end of my conversation with Jared about Simon Nemich, but first I've got to tell you about bet online because bet online is back. There might be less football being played, but betonline.net has way more odds and info for this playoff season. From scores, totals, player performance props, to where the next fight coach is going to land, BetOnline is the number one spot for all things NFL betting in 2022. And it's not just football. BetOnline.net's basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC odds, odds coverage is the best in the business. From sports right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, BetOnline is your number one online wagering destination. BetOnline, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports and play your favorite games. BetOnline, where the game starts. Yeah, that's... I'm trying to think. I feel like I feel like there's someone I'm not thinking of, but 
mm-hmm. yeah it's always super cool like you say with with dry title being being german and just kind of the, the boom that the, the, that gave the the country and it's always great yeah. to see players staying at home as well mm-hmm. like i know the the thing is it's oh they want they have to go and play you know ncaa or they have to go and play chr hockey but it's yeah. it's always like you say it's, it's so good to see them saying no i'm gonna stay and i'm gonna play and i mean nemich is playing in the uh in the adult league he's not playing mm-hmm. under 20s as far as i know so uh no yeah yeah he, it, uh... he, he, he's up there in the the top league and he's playing um you know very important minutes and and putting up points at an impressive pace for uh um i guess he's turning uh he'll be turning 18 shortly here because his birthday is in february but um yeah it's impressive and and like you said i just i i love to i like I love seeing uh, these players stay in their their own country at times and really trust uh, their uh, their country's development for them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, real quick, I did look up the the Austrian players. There have been three first round uh, Austrians: Thomas Vanek in oh, 2003, that's who it was. Michael Grabner in two thousand six, and then Marco Rossi in uh, twenty twenty oh, is is Austrian that- as well. Marco Rossi should have been an obvious one that completely flew over my mind. I'll get ripped on that for <laughs> missing out on him as a scout. But uh, uh, yeah, Thomas Vanek was the other one I was thinking of. I knew there was another Austrian, but um, yeah, you could add uh, Marco Casper. Uh, I, I see him as a first rounder. He uh, he may uh, join that list. Well, it is it is again someone I'm going to have to be keeping an eye on. And so yeah, we did a I did a, a profile with with Mikhail Holm about. Slavkovsky, so he's someone that I'm super, super interested mm-hmm. in, and he seems to kind of be falling in that kind of four to ten range that I think the the Blue Jackets are, are likely to pick. Um, I mean, honestly, mm-hmm. like the ideal for us would be to win the draft lottery with our own pick, and then Chicago picking third. But yeah, I don't see that happening because the hockey gods hate us. So if we can kind of get <laughs> two two picks in the kind of four to ten range, I think is going to be really it's going to be kind of that that sweet spot for sweet spot for um, Blue Jackets fans, and these are two, yeah. you know, Nazar and Nemec are definitely two names that I'm going to be keeping an eye on, mm-hmm. especially Nemec when I inevitably ruin my sleep schedule to watch the Olympics, even when I said I wasn't going to. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, he he'll be uh, he'll be interesting to watch, that's for sure, and uh, um, I'm excited to watch him too. I'll I'll ruin my my sleep schedule's already ruined from scouting, so. <laughs> well, I'll be. I'm. I'm normally up at 3 a.m. my time, anyways. Oh, I hear you. I um. In terms of the Olympics, actually, I I think it's really interesting that, that obviously uh, you know, a lot of people were upset that NHL players aren't going to the Olympics, but I had so much fun yeah. watching the 2018 Olympics because mm-hmm. of you know there was the the German silver medal that was really great and. It gives you a chance to, and you know, like in a in a regular year, if the NHL players were there, a guy like Nemec would probably never get near the Slovakian team no. for the Olympics, and so that's just so cool to you to be able to use the Olympics as a scouting tool. Yeah, um, and you can use it um, not just for you know a player who is eighteen or whatever. Um, I want to say I could be completely wrong about this, but. Um, Detroit, I think he plays on, yeah, Detroit Red Wings forward, uh, Pios, uh, I don't know how to say his first name, uh, Pios Suter. Uh, I believe he was scouted uh, from that, from those Olympics um, when he played for Switzerland and uh, teams were interested in him. They liked how he played in the Olympics and now he's an NHL player. So I think just, you know, everyone wants to see NHL players go and play in the Olympics and be a best on the, uh, you know, best of the best type of tournament but i think this is all this gives a great kind of uh introduction to some players that are not household names and could be signed by nhl teams because nhl teams are going to be the nhl teams will will be will have scouts watching the the olympic games and seeing if they can maybe find someone who's got some at least depth upside or something like that yeah, for sure. I mean, we have a handful of, of Blue Jackets prospects going to the Olympics. Uh, we've got mm-hmm. a couple of, of Russians, Kent Johnson, going on the um, 
the taxi squad for Canada. And I believe we have a, either a Slovakian or a Czech player. I can never remember um, which one. So it'll be, it'll mm-hmm. be interesting to, to watch them, but also to kind of look at prospects that could be in a, a Blue Jackets jersey. So I'm, I'm super excited mm-hmm. for the Olympics, even without, you know, the, uh, the NHL players. But uh, yeah, like, like I said before, I got sidetracked by the Olympics. <laughs> Two super interesting and exciting players that I am gonna be I'm gonna be keeping an eye on, and if they end up on Columbus, then you know that could be that could be a really great thing. Um, but for mm-hmm. people who kind of want to maybe know more about these players, know more about prospects in general, uh, where can people find you and your your stuff? Yeah, so uh, if you want to follow uh, me personally, uh, my Twitter is at uh, uh, Jared Brown ninety seven on Twitter, and um, Draft Pro Hockey. We released our twenty twenty two preview magazine in December. Um, that is available on uh, Amazon and on our website for a digital copy. Um, and that inside of that will give you a bit of a, a full scouting report on both uh, Nemish and Nazar for. Uh, any readers to to read up on and and uh, as bunch of uh, as well as a bunch of other uh, prospects we we had uh, ranked in that uh, magazine. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, sitting down and and spending some time talking talking about prospects with me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you again for having me. And that's all I've got for today. Uh, next week, the Blue Jackets are playing hockey again next week, so we'll uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some injury news that uh, came out at the end of this week and how that's going to affect the lines going forward. And uh, we've got some more prospect talk for you as well, so that should be exciting. Uh, I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find this podcast at L-O underscore Blue Jacket on Twitter. And if you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. Thank you once again for making us your first listen of the day. Locked on Blue Jackets is and always will be free and available on all podcast platforms. And until Monday, make sure you stay locked on.